Yep. Welcome everybody to another episode of Latif's Inspired. Today I'm going to be cooking a British Indian restaurant style BIR chicken korai. I've simplified it for you guys to enjoy at home and I'm going to cook it in a fantastic korai which I have here to get that authentic flavour. But I'm going to put a lovely twist to it as I do in my restaurant. It's a phenomenal dish, nice thick sauce with crunchy sort of uh, peppers and onions. It's absolutely gorgeous, very flavoursome, very delicious a dish for you guys to try at home. Right, here are some of the ingredients. So the key to this is uh, the peppers. I cut it in half and a few wedges and got it to here. So you can get cubes, about one and a half, two inches cubed. Um, I got the um, onions. So lovely, just peeled it uh, to pieces and just cut it up like this. So it's nice wedges. Now I've got one kg of chicken over here. Now ideally you want to marinate the chicken about half an hour beforehand. So what I'm going to marinate it with, I'm adding about a teaspoon of turmeric, about a teaspoon of chili powder, and I'm going to need some salt, about a good teaspoon of salt. Right, so salt, turmeric, and chili powder, and just get about a good couple of tablespoons of uh, lemon juice, fresh lemon juice is prefer preferable. And you can add some yogurt here if you want. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna give this a nice little mix. Chicken breast is very plain. So you can, in, the, in Indian restaurants, we normally cook the chicken beforehand and basically cook it like a curry, then add it uh, to the dish. But what I'm gonna show you is a fantastic technique you spice, uh, use the spice marinade for the chicken and I'm gonna uh, cook it first in the karai. So all the flavors penetrated, the salt, the spices have gone in and I've used a bit of lemon juice as it toughens up the chicken and helps with the marination. So here you go, chicken's marinated, fantastic color. And now leave it for about a good half an hour, whack it in the fridge and start prepping all your um, other bits and bobs. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I've got this phenomenal korai, which brings out a fantastic flavor. And what I'm gonna do, add some oil. So basically I've added a cup of oil in here. Got my teaspoon. I'm gonna add this lovely ghee. about three good teaspoons of ghee. Now ghee's got a high, very high um, heat content, smoke content, so you can cook it for whatever you want. It's not gonna burn, like butter. So now the oil has heated up, the ghee has heated up. Now I'm gonna cook the chicken. If you crowd the chicken, you, the chicken might steam, which you don't want. So try to give it some space. Now what this process does, it just releases the natural liquid from the chicken, because we don't want to have uh, a runny curry when we cook the korai. So we cook this a few minutes each side until the chicken's toughened up outside and it's brought out some liquid. Right, it's been a few minutes, have a look. Because the korai hollow is quite good. There's plenty of oil in the middle. And the chicken's cooking away beautifully. 
And what this does when you cook it in the oil is it gives it that sort of fried flavor. It's absolutely gorgeous. And you've got the spices, very subtle, simple spices that cook the chicken. As you can see here, there's a bit of fat coming out from the chicken. That white bit there, that's what you're looking for. There you go, there's some white bit coming out of this one. Let me show you. There you go, that bit there. Smelling beautiful. What do you think, Mr. Cameraman? Can you smell it? Can't wait to tuck in, mate. <laughs> It smells phenomenal already. Normally eight to ten minutes for the batch. So I've got I'm gonna cook it in two batches and then I'm gonna start cooking the curry. Beautiful. Guys, the chicken's ready. When you've got the when you've got this fantastic colour, that's when you know it's done. So now what I'm gonna do. Very aromatic, that lovely fried chicken smell almost. Beautiful. Look at that. Lovely golden crispy chicken. That's the second batch. All in. What I want to say is the chicken is not fully cooked. It's almost cooked, about 80%, 70 to 80%. What this does is the moisture inside, when you add it to uh, the BIR chicken, um, into the gravy sauce or the spices, and then you add the gravy, then it finishes it off. That's the secret to tender, soft, succulent chicken, guys. So you must do it like this when you're cooking at home to get that flavor, because breast can sort of dry out, which you do not want. We, we enjoy a piece of breast, but it's not very, it's not a fatty piece, so um, it's not as flavoursome, whereas the thighs are absolutely gorgeous. Right, it's been eight to ten minutes. The chicken have coloured beautifully, as you can see over here. There you go. Looks and smells divine. Almost smells like a fried chicken shop. <laughs> Now, I've simplified that for you guys at home. Normally, I would have cooked this in some spices, but this, I believe, it tastes absolutely phenomenal. Right, <clears throat> so this is all the peppers and the onions going in. Just a lot. Now what I'm doing is slightly softening up the peppers and the onions. And when you cook it in the cast iron for rice, you get this lovely smoky sort of grilled flavour. It's beautiful. I'm adding, this is about a tablespoon of ginger and a tablespoon of garlic. Oh, can you smell that? As soon as the ginger and garlic's gone in, that what? Amazing. The, the gas was on a high heat. Now I'm putting it on a medium. So one is. I added about a teaspoon on the chicken, so there's plenty of salt there. The salt to taste, so you can add more or less to your heart's desire. There you go. Once the ginger and garlic is caramelized, add the spices. So I'm adding about a good teaspoon of turmeric, chili powder. I'm only adding one teaspoon. If you like at madras strength, add about two and a half teaspoons 
Um, so we, uh, we want a medium, so that's why we've added uh, just about uh, one teaspoon. Uh, add about half a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of garam masala, one teaspoon of curry powder, and about two teaspoons of coriander powder. I love the flavor of coriander. Once the spice has gone in, add about a good tablespoon of tomato puree. Give that a nice mix. Smells wonderful. Now I'm going to add some tomato. So this is about three tomatoes. So I'm adding half uh, of, um, there's about one and a half tomatoes just gone in. This is gonna become soft. And I'm gonna keep the rest for towards the end. So all I'm doing is taking the rawness out of the spice here. In the oil, it smells beautiful. Very aromatic, very fragrant. And <clears throat> when I've added the spice, I've lowered the gas to a medium low. I'm just gonna slightly put it up now to a medium high. You don't want the spices to burn. Now I'm adding about four green chilies. If you like it spicy, slit it open or break it and add it in, but I want it to look nice and just a bit of flavor. So that's gone in. So now this is one kg of chicken. The chicken's going in now. You can eat the curry just like this, but we're going to add the base gravy for a bit of sauce. Smells wonderful guys. Now all I'm doing is I'm boonering all the chicken, the peppers and all the rest of the spices into the chicken. This is my secret recipe guys. Now I'm gonna add this um, mustard. I mean in Bengali cooking we use a lot of mustard um, but the best mustard in the whole wide world is the British mustard and I swear by it. So I'm gonna add this one, two, three heat teaspoon of zingy tangy mustard. Right. Give this a nice little mix. When you add the mustard oil, it doesn't have that potent pungency. But when you add this beautiful mustard paste, trust me, it's the game changer. It's absolutely gorgeous in flavor and beautiful. So there you go, give it a lovely little mix. If you come to my restaurant and order a chicken curry, we use this secret recipe of mustard. And the karai is very, very popular. There you go. Now, I, I did put, reduce the gas. I'm going to reduce, uh, put it up again to a high heat. All the spices and the paste have marinated, uh, has gone in. Now you can see the onion sort of half cooked. There you go, because it's sort of um, changed in color. A bit of white bits left in the middle. So it's almost cooked now. Now this is two portions, I'm adding one ladle that's two ladle of base gravy gone in there, that's about 500 mils now I'm going to cook this up let it simmer on a high heat, it'll be bubbling away. There you go. I'm gonna let this cook now and come back to it shortly. Let me show you this lovely karai. Beautiful. Now authentically we wouldn't really add the base gravy, but this is a BIR standard dish, so it needs a nice little sauce as you can see it's thickening up. And as I always say, when it gets to a custard consistency, that's when you know the food is ready. 
So there you go, it's bubbling away, so it's almost ready. There we go. Once the preparation is ready, the cooking process is simple. Fresh coriander. And there you go. There you go, that's restaurant style chicken korai done for you. To serve it authentically, we normally add it, we normally cook, uh, serve it on the korai, which I'll show you. Look at this wonderful curry, look at that. Simmering away in this fantastic korai. And now, we normally serve it. Look at that. There you go. Chicken karai. Looks stunning, lovely and sizzling away. And if you've enjoyed this uh, recipe, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more fantastic videos at Latif's Inspire. See you soon. To myself, what a wonderful world.